I'd like for you to turn to Galatians chapter 5. And um, while you turn there, I'm going to share my heart with you. Can I do that? I have a burden. And I'm not, I'm not, um, not good at saying some things to my people, to my church. Um, been here pastoring, be 22 years this year. And I know that this is, it's typical of, of every church. And I'm not saying that our church is any better or worse than anybody else's, but, and I don't want you to do what I'm going to share with you because I tell you to do it. I want you to do it because God tells you to do it. But we have, every week, we have four services. We have Sunday school, we have this service, we have what used to be a Sunday evening service, and we changed the time so that uh, people would maybe better accommodate some people. To, we changed it to 4 p.m. And then on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and... It's always been a burden of mine, and I've, I've prayed about it. I've asked God to, to maybe, maybe it's me, maybe I'm not interesting enough on Sunday night or whatever, but almost nobody comes now on Sunday evening. We may have a few more on Wednesday night. Some churches have dropped their Sunday evening service and their midweek service altogether. There are some churches that they just have two Sunday morning services and that's, that's it. That pastor preaches one sermon, preaches it twice on Sunday, and then that's it. Um, the Bible says that we're to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. What day is that? That's the day. And I think we see the day approaching. I think we do. I do. Don't know when it's going to be. I don't have any insight on that. But I think we see it approaching. And I know that we could all use, number one, the fellowship. We could all use the encouragement. Look at me, I'm shaking. I don't like saying stuff like this. You're my church, you're my people, I love you. But we have these services for a reason. We could all use the Bible. And if I'm not doing well enough with what I'm doing on Sunday night or Wednesday night, let me know. Because I would do anything to get you here. And it's not, it's not my ego, it's not the, that I want those numbers. It has nothing to do with that. It's, I care about my people. And I know, for me personally, to not be in God's house would not do well for me. I need to be here. So, and how many times in 22 years have I ever laid this out to you people. 
I don't think I've ever in 22 years said a word about folks not showing up for church. I don't think I've ever said it. Okay? Don't do it. Because I said so. Don't you dare do that. You do it because God said so. Okay? Galatians chapter 5. Can I preach now? Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How many of you know that's true? For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. That also is true. And uh, I'm about to change my message right here. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. And again, that's an if. It's an if. There are ifs in the Bible. If you are led by the Spirit, then you will not be under the law. But if you are not led by the Spirit, God's going to hold against you every law that He's got. I'm about to change my message. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness preached on that last Sunday morning and then left out of town <laughs> idolatry that's what I was going to preach this morning I'm not going to preach it I'm going to preach something else witchcraft hatred underline that one in your Bible Variance. You know what that means? You're a rule breaker. You're a rule breaker because it's a rule. Any place where there's a rule, you say, I don't have to do that. That's what variance is. Okay? There's ordinance and then there's variance. Ordinance means you obey the rules. Variance means you try every way in the world to not obey the rule. And I suspect that we've got more of that in us than we want to admit. So if the Lord allows me one day, I'm going to preach it. When I get to it, I'm going to preach on it. Emulations. That means trying to be like emulators, try to be like the world. Wrath. Strife. Seditions, heresies, envyings, that's jealousy, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. There's 18 if you count such like. That's 6 plus 6 plus 6, in case you didn't figure that out. Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's heaven. These are the things that if you let them take over your life, you're not going to heaven. These are the things that God said don't do. But, our flesh says, do them. Heavenly Father, I ask your help today. I don't want to preach this. I don't want to say it. I love you. And I'll do what you tell me to do.
I love my people. I love my family. But sometimes we're not right. And these good people deserve to hear what's true. And I think, Father, that they've got a heart that wants to know what's true. And I think, Father, that they want the pastor to say it. So, God, I need help saying it. I need help preaching it. I need help doing it with the right attitude and the right spirit. And we need help, Father, hearing it. Because none of us like to be told when we're wrong. None of us do. We're rebellious in our nature. We're full of treachery and sedition. We want to be like the world. Our flesh wants to take over. Our flesh wants to do this and do that and do everything except serve you. And our flesh can't be the boss anymore. Your spirit has to be in charge of us or we're not going to make it. So Father, help us, help us to see with our spirit eyes the things that our flesh wants to keep blinded. Help us to see that our nature is not right. That our desires are wicked. That our ambition is rebellious. That when you lay down rules for life, we look for ways to get out of them. And then justify it. And Father, we're not right in that. And God, I include myself in that. I am with these people, God. There are things I do not want to hear. There are things I do not want to say. But we're your people. We're the ones who tell everybody else that we follow God. We follow the Bible. So Father, today, help us to follow the Bible. God, preach to us today. God, you preach to me. And you preach to my people. That way they'll hear it. God, if it's from you, they'll hear it. If it's from me, they won't. And I don't expect them to. But God, let us hear from you today. And we trust you. We know, God, that you'll say things to us that are right and that are true and that we need to hear. Because you love us. You cared for us. You died for us. You rose again for us. So, Father, help us to hear from heaven today. This is your servant's prayer, and we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our God, and all of God's people said. I am going to change the message this morning. Back in those verses, starting in verse 16, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It is something that every Christian needs, and I mean needs, to learn in life. If you're a new Christian, or if you're an old Christian, you need, to, you need to know it for the first time, and then you need to re-know it, renew it, have it brought back to memory every now and then, this one thing, that when you are truly saved. Now, in Sunday school, I'm talking about false brethren. False brethren will never get what I'm saying. They will never understand it. They will never comply with it. So if you're a false believer, you're going to ignore what I'm going to say anyway. But for those of you who are truly born again, there are two competing natures in your, that make up who you are. Your name is George. Your name is Mike. Your name is Brian, your name is Sterling, or your name is Mike. Mike, Mike. Okay? But there, there are two parts to Mike. There's a really good part and a really bad one. And they're in the same place competing for the same thing. They're, they're contrary one against another. 
It's like two brothers or a brother and sister, like me and Melissa, used to, we used to fight, we used to fight. Fight, fight, fight. That's all we did. Fight, fight, fight. We were just competing with one another and fighting. Don't touch me. Mom, she's touching me. He's touching me. Mom, tell him to get his hands off me. That was, that was just first thing in the morning. But there's two competing, combative, hating, diametrically opposed beings inside of each one of you. One of it is your flesh. And it's a battle for control. The other part of you is your spirit, which is in communion and connection with God's spirit. God's spirit and God's word. If you look here in these verses, every place you find the word spirit, you can interchange that with the Bible. If you will walk in the word of God, ye will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. Now, look at what it says. It does not say you will not have the lust of the flesh. It does not say that. It says you'll not fulfill it. You will always have a rebellious, sinful nature. You will have that until your body is dead. Always. It never goes away until you draw in your last breath. You have a wicked, rebellious, full of variance, full of witchcraft, full of rebellion, and idol worshiping. You have a wicked, sinful nature in you that will always compete against the Bible and the Spirit. Always. And sometimes, on Sunday morning, it'll win. It'll win. You'll lay in that bed, say, I ain't getting up, I ain't going to church, I ain't doing it today, or you'll be here and be hateful, be just mad at the world, not wanting to listen, don't want to hear Brother Mike preach, I don't want to preach. You had no idea the times I battled just getting up here to preach. Not wanting to. Don't want to. Don't care. That's that, that is that wicked nature in me. Then you got the Spirit. And the Spirit, it's holy, it's righteous, it's pure, it's undefiled. And we're talking about the Word of God. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about your spirit. We're talking about the inner man that was, that was created in you. We're talking about the new man that's renewed every day. We're talking about the hidden man. We're talking about the Jesus living inside of you. That part of you is holy and righteous and undefiled, and it never sins. Never. That's what John was talking about, First John. That which is born of God sinneth not. Well, he's not talking about your flesh. Your flesh is going to sin. Your flesh is going to want and hates God and hates God's word, hates God's commandments. But then your spirit loves it and can't get enough of it. Your spirit can't get enough Bible reading. Your spirit can't get enough preaching. Your spirit can't get enough prayer time. Your spirit can't get enough witnessing time. Your spirit cannot get enough meditating time on God's word. Your spirit just cannot get enough of serving God. But your flesh fights you. It fights you. And sometimes you don't come to church. Sometimes you don't pray. You don't read your Bible. You don't tell anybody about Jesus. You're not a witness. You're not a testimony. You're nothing. And it's going to be that way until the day you die. And somebody said, well, how do, you, how do you determine which one wins out? And a fellow said, a lot of it depends on which one you feed. Starve your flesh. You just won't have the energy for nonsense. Feed your spirit. Feed, the, feed it the word of God. Feed it some prayer time. Feed that spirit. It'll be strengthened. It'll be renewed. Look at your Bible. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Again, he did not say you will not have the lust of the flesh. He said you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Man, I don't want to say that. But 
Verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. These are the contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Did you hear that? So let me, let me just throw some things at you here for a minute. Turn to Romans 7. I love you. I am really struggling. One of the qualifications for a bishop is that he rules his house well. Like me or not, somebody's got to be in charge of the church. And I'm not in charge if I can't rule the house well. If I can't lay down certain rules. If I can't say certain things. Out of fear. You know what my fear is? What, what's my biggest fear? You're going to get mad and leave. I've had so much of that in 22 years. People get mad and leave. When, when the online people do it, I mean, it, it bothers me a little bit, but I'm not as close to them as I am you guys. It's that way in my own family. Sometimes I don't want to say things. But it's my responsibility to rule. So you have to ask yourself. You got a flesh, you got a spirit. And they're always going to compete. They're going to compete for time. They're going to compete for activity. Right? They're going to compete for space. Territory. So let's just run down a list of things. When you're in church, is that the spirit of the flesh that brought you here? When you're reading your Bible, is that the spirit of the flesh reading your Bible? When you're cursing somebody, driving down the highway, or at work, or in your house, is that the spirit of the flesh? Right. Don't tell me you don't do it. When you're watching HBO, is that the flesh or the spirit? You ought not have HBO. That is nothing but soft porn television. That's the flesh. That's not the spirit. The spirit did not tell you to do that. When you lay out, when we have a church service, don't answer. Is that the spirit or is that the flesh? There are people on the other side of that camera that would give up everything to come and sit in your pew. Jeremy, am I right? He's been trying for a year now to be able to move up here, and he can't because of the situation going on. He cannot move up here, or else he would have been here already. They would give anything to come and sit in this place. This is a good church. Amen. It's the best one that I've ever been part of.
I've been asked to go somewhere else, and I'm not doing it. Not doing it. Can't leave you people. Wouldn't do it. You have to ask yourself, is it the spirit or the flesh that's making my decisions for me? When you're watching television, when you're going to church, when you're at work and something comes up that didn't go your way, what's, what's going to make the decision, the spirit or your flesh? When, when some little thing comes up and you were supposed to pray with somebody or you were supposed to read your Bible or you were supposed to come to church or you were supposed to whatever, when some little thing comes up, the devil will trip you up on everything that your spirit wants to do. In Romans 7, look at verse 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto what? What is, what is living in your flesh going to accomplish you? It's going to kill you. Now you think about that. You want your Bible reading killed off? It'll do it. How many people, how many people have we gone to church with over the years that are not in church now, they don't read their Bible, they're not praying, they're probably not going to heaven because their flesh killed that off. How many people do we know like that? You want to be next? The motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Again, if you walk in the Spirit, which is walking in the Bible, the Word of God, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. God will not hold the law against you. He will not do it. When we had a, when we had a Christian school here, Brother George, we had an ACE school. And what that taught me was, it taught the students self-discipline. Because they were the ones responsible for filling out a gold card and doing the, they were, they assigned their own schoolwork and they fulfilled their own schoolwork. And I learned that there are, there were some students that we never had to even look at or touch. They would come in, they would fill out their gold card, they would do their work, they would score right, they would never cheat, they would finish early. We never, we gave them extra break time, we gave them liberty, we let them do whatever they wanted to do because we knew they were never going to do anything wrong. But then there were students that we had to monitor, we had to check them, we had to look over, look over their shoulder, we had to double back on them, we had to, when they got up to go to the bathroom, we had to practically follow them there and follow them back because we didn't trust them. They were under every law that we had. Because they couldn't be trusted. Now you got to ask yourself the question, which part of you rules? The part that is free or the part that can't be trusted? Which one? Verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law, for I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Remember, that's, that's evil deeds, lustful deeds. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. See, there it is right there. Your flesh is going to lie to you, and it's going to do it every single time. So let me tell you what your flesh told you. When you, when you weren't reading your Bible, and the Holy Ghost said, you know, you ought to be reading the Bible. And your flesh said... That's no big deal. God will forgive me. I don't need it. Was your flesh telling the truth? When you were supposed to pray, you were supposed to pray. Pray about your family. Pray about needs. Pray about the church. Pray about this. Pray about that. 
when you were supposed to pray about a situation and you didn't do it, your flesh said, God's going to do it anyway. God's going to fix it. I don't, I don't have to pray about it. I don't have to do that. Was your, was your flesh telling the truth? No, it was lying to you. It'll lie to you, and it'll lie to you every single time. Won't it? It deceived you. It told you something that was not true. And you believed it. Roy, can you take another drink? But he's had the thoughts. His flesh said, one more won't hurt me. Many times. See, Roy's always the go-to guy. But I want to make a point about how your flesh is. Roy's always been honest about his drinking. And in that, he's an example to everybody here because you don't wrestle with drinking. You wrestle with something else, maybe worse. But it's, this, it's the same. Your flesh says, I don't need this, I don't need to do this today. And your flesh lied. And it'll lie to you every time. It'll lie to you, listen to the preacher, it'll lie to you every Sunday. Won't it? You may not like what I'm saying about coming to church, but I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. So, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. You know you're breaking the rules, don't you? You know you're breaking the rules. But it's what you do. And I, trust me, I'm not getting anybody more than I'm getting myself. I am dead equal with everybody here. I'm not giving you anything that I don't need first. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. How many of y'all say amen to that one? Amen. What I hate, that do I. You ought, to put that, you ought to make a bumper sticker and put that on your car. Instead of that stupid fish. Amen? Caution. Christian failure. In bo inside. Now then, verse 17, or 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. And I'm... I'm just like the rest of you. What I want to do, I don't do. And what I don't want to do, sure enough, and I hate that. I hate it. For the good that I would not, that I, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find a law then that is, when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Everybody, verse 24, say this out loud with me, these words. O oh, wretched man that I am. Not that you used to be. Paul said it. In the present tense. You ought to get a hold of that. And remember, 
that when you don't do what you know is right, it is a sin. And you just have consented that it is right because you know that when you don't do it, you know you're not doing right. I know there's a lot of mercy with God. I'm living proof of that. But every now and then, God's got to pull the rope on us and make us stop. And make us to see that we're not living right. We're not thinking right. We're not living right. We're not doing right. And to obey is better than sacrifice. That's the only thing in the whole Bible that's better than the cross is you obey. I love this church. But we're not going to have revival if we keep doing what we're doing. And I'm one of these, I don't think we need to have a week's worth of service to have revival. We could have it today. If you want. If you want, God can revive each and every one of us. My life is basically summed up like this. I need a good old-fashioned butt kicking from time to time. I need it. I need a tail whooping. I need correcting. All of us get off course a little, don't we? And then God sets about to put us back where we need to be. So I'm up for it if you are. You want to pray? Let's come and pray. Let's ask God for a revival this morning. Let's tell our flesh no. Okay? Let's tell the devil, let's tell our flesh no. We're not doing this. Please. Don't do anything to please me or because I said so. Please don't do that. If God, if I put it in you, it won't last very long. And you'll be right back where you were. If God puts it in you, I promise you, it'll stay there. I promise. Our Father, come before you today. And God, if I, have, if I have unduly offended anybody, if I have unrighteously and unduly offended anybody today, God, you forgive me and let them forgive me. But Father, I tried to say what needed to be said I tried to say it with love because I really love these people. I don't want to lose any of them. I want to be close to them. I want to be friends with my brothers and sisters. I want to know that they have my back and I want them to know that I've got theirs. 
I want them to know that no matter what they decide, no matter what they do, I'm still going to love them. I'm still going to care about them, even the ones that have left. And Father, forgive us because we've gotten into the role of letting our flesh make the decisions. Letting our rebellion decide. Our variances. We decide what rules we're going to keep. God, that's not how it works. If you're not in charge, if you're not our Father, and if you don't have a right to tell us what to do, then who are we? God, we don't want to be bastards. So, Father, correct us. We get out of line, correct us. We get rebellious, chasten us. We get deceitful, give us the truth. We get lazy, put your foot in our backside, make us get up, do something. God, I got it as much in me as anybody else does. So, me first, Father. Me first. Father, I love this church, and I love what you're doing with it. And I want to keep going. I want it to thrive. I want us to abound in love for one another. Abound in love for every visitor and every sinner that comes in here or that watches online. I want them to know, God, that they're loved, that they're cared for. That they can find in this place a place of salvation, a place of rest, a place of fellowship. No matter where we come from, no matter who we are, we can find that in this place. God, that's what I want. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the online people. I thank you for their faithfulness, their willingness, Lord, to listen, to learn. Father, instill that here. Give us a desire for righteousness, a thirst, God, for things that are right. Help us, dear God, to crucify our flesh and its rebellious nature. Give us revival today. Raise us up walking anew with a new purpose, a new life, dear God, a new way of seeing things. Crucifying the flesh once again, getting it out of the way so that our spirit can be free. Father, give us revival. Bless this church. Help us, dear God, to continue, Lord, what you started here. And don't let any of us quit. Don't let any of us quit. We thank you, God, for hearing us today. We thank you, God, for dealing with us today. We thank you, God, for changing our mind and our heart. Father, we look forward, God, to what more and greater things you are going to do with this church. We thank you, God, for choosing us to be part of it because none of us deserved it, especially not me. So, Father, I thank you for all that you've done and all that you've given me. I only ask, God, that you continue to give me the opportunity to share and continue to share all the things, God, that you've blessed me with with all who will listen. Thank you, God, for reviving us today. We stand together, Lord, with a new hope. And we thank you, Lord, for helping us to stand together. We ask your blessings now. Forgive us, Lord. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. All of God's people said. Amen. Show somebody you love them today before you sit down. Love you too, Johnny. <laughs> hey, I am your friend. Appreciate I got it. You back. Amen.